and sometimes you don't even understand why why they are coming so the psalmist asks a very important question why do the righteous suffer why do the righteous suffer why do the righteous go through so many attacks so many attacks i was just walking in the office today and i was thinking i was thinking about something something very interesting i was thinking about that if i have a daughter who is five years old and my daughter comes home and her head is broken with a cutlass and she's bleeding and crying i don't think i'm going to ask her what did you do wrong what did you do wrong for them to beat you like this the first question i'm likely to ask is who did this to you and immediately without knowing whether my daughter went and destroyed their diamonds poured hot water on them maybe my daughter even went and used a knife to stab them i don't care the important thing i know is who did this to you because you don't deserve, deserve this i'm going to attack the person but i noticed that although you know we we are evil people and we are human beings with evil mind and wicked heart we love our children so much that we don't even think what did they do wrong to deserve this cutlass brutality on their head all we want to know is who did this to you so that we will go and attack the person but when it comes to our relationship with god we we, we behave differently as soon as you are a christian you go through crisis the first thing the christians are asking is what did she do wrong what did he do wrong and you yourself because of the sin mentality you see we have a sin mentality an evil mind as soon as you are going through something the first thing you do is lord forgive me my sins lord forgive me my past sins my present sins and the sins i'm yet to commit and father if i have done anything wrong that has brought this attack on me father please forgive me it is a very weak way of thinking there's no righteousness in this way of thinking and, and today i want to bring you to the place where you understand that that way of thinking will make you it will get you defeated in battle again and again and again because if the devil realizes that that is the way you think you will never win a battle my bible says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises against you in judgment you shall condemn and he said this is the heritage of the servants of the lord and he adds and their righteousness is of me their righteousness is of me you have to come to the place where you believe in the righteousness of jesus christ more than the filthy rags you carry which you call righteousness so the devil hits a believer the devil hits you and the first thing you are thinking about is what did i do wrong you don't need to do anything wrong for the devil to attack you now people don't attack you the devil doesn't attack you principalities don't always attack you because of the wrongs you commit but because of what you stand for and what you do satanic attacks are inevitable they will come against you if you are doing the right thing they will come against you if you are doing the right thing satan will attack you if you are standing in the right place i mean for example th there's no way i can be standing here pastoring the desert pastures and i'm not expecting attacks today i was talking to one of my nephews and he said daddy you know i mean people tell us they say when they go to the south they are told oh when you enter Bogatanga, even in the night, the first thing you see is your church. The light in the place and everything. And then even daytime you are passing by is the same. I, I'll be very naive to think I'll be pastoring this church without attacks. And you that are a member of this church and you contribute to this church, even if it's your presence alone that you used to contribute to desert pastures. And those of you that do it online and follow with your prayer, and follow with your worship and follow with your presence there is no way you would do all these things without any attack so the attacks don't come because of what you have done wrong the attacks come because of what you are doing right and i want to show you two magnets just two magnets of satanic attacks 
Number one is association. Number two is assignment. Association and assignment. Now you go back to the book of Revelation, the best number 11, and the Bible said that I will give power unto my two witnesses and they will prophesy 200 1,000, I beg your pardon, 203 score days clothed in sackcloth. And the Bible said, these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. These are the two olive trees standing before the God of the earth. Now look at the verse number 5. The verse number 5 says, and if any man will hurt them, so men will seek to hurt them because they are standing before the God of the whole earth. When you are standing before the God of the earth, you expect attacks. What you associate with <clears throat> will determine your attacks. And these two witnesses, their association with God made them enemies of the devil. Anybody that is standing with God, you are enemy of the devil, you will be attacked. Your association with with god will bring you attacks if you come into a land where you are and you say you are on god's side the enemy will attack you satan will attack you if you associate with godly people it will expose you to attacks i, I want to break down i know that when i talk about associating with god and you being attacked you will understand it easily i want to break it down and talk to you about association with a spouse with a spouse there is a certain kind of man you attack you 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 marry and you'll be attacked i remember during the time mommy and i wanted to marry we went through so many attacks then mommy's mommy's father had this friend who i think he was in the lodge or something mommy remembers the man the man asked mommy, Nanana, Adia Ukumi Ube to me. Because Adia Ebano, can you handle it? And for a long time we kept asking, what did the man see? What did the man know? What was the man predicting that it was going to come? Now, there are people you marry and it's going to be battle. You you would deal with things you never believed would happen to you. And sometimes you marry people. Who are under ancestral curse at times you marry people that have got a mandate an assignment that is a high calling and you'll be attacked these days is very interesting that many people when they want to marry they are thinking about the academic level of the person they are thinking about the the person's financial status they, they are thinking about geographical advantage and so on and so forth but i tell you people when you marry good people even good people you will face attacks there are some kind of women if you go and marry them you are practically snatching them out of the mouth of a lion and the lions will attack you the bible said concerning david he said that a lion and a bear came and took a sheep and he said i went after them i smote them i held them by the beard and smote them when they rose up to attack so king david or david the shepherd went after the the bear to snatch the animal from their mouth and because of that the bear and the lion turn around and they attack david now they are attacking david because david is associated with sheep and the devil wants the sheep or the bear and the lion they want the sheep whenever you are going to marry start thinking about the battles i'm fed up with these people marry and finish and when the battle comes they are they are like ah uh ah -uh. It's very difficult to marry this man. It's very difficult to marry this woman. Listen to me. Associating with people is a battle. You fight their battles. You fight their battles. I, when I was going to marry, at that time, my father was an adult worshiper. He wasn't born again at that time. I took mommy to the village. We were in final year university, about to finish. I took her to the village. And when we went, here were these, I normally call them seven idols. Three were in front of the house. The other four were strategically positioned inside the house. The other day, my brother Alex made me laugh. Eh? You know, he was telling me that those idols, I, I was a pot. My, my spirit was a pot. So 
and then he told me there was a stone in the pot and he was a stone <laughs> you know i never knew he was a stone until until about two days ago he told me he said ah, manda akur manda akur you know so he was a stone so when i now said i wouldn't worship idols i'm not going to follow idols then my father said okay alex is the next in line he too disappointed him the man was mad finally he had to give up the idols because there was nobody to worship them so if he died nobody would give him libation and nobody will give him any water to drink and he'll be thirsty in the land of the living can you imagine he he'll just be in hell and he'll be very thirsty so common sense told him just stop these idols but mommy went with me to the house saw these idols and we are still talking about marrying one day she never said oh i can't handle this battle but definitely if you are going to marry a man like that even if he's born again at that time my father was not born again so we have to believe god for my father to be born again and that one happened and then we have to believe god for him to break down the idols and that one happened and after he's born again and he breaks down the idols we still have to believe god for the effect of the ancestral curses which was supposed to be to the third and to the fourth generation to also disappear all that is battle so mommy did not marry she joined the army i thought somebody would clap don't look at me like that so I, I get surprised when people are going to get married and it is these long wedding gowns lipsticks long fingernails eyelashes like ceiling brush and i'm like do they know what they are can you imagine soldiers going to battle in wedding gown and then when they marry and finish the marriage lasts only one week and that is because after the wedding and the honeymoon the marriage is over because now the battles have become strong because you marry the man just the first night then you realize che why were you why were you because this woman you married and finished the first night she's lying down shouting jamie mu jamie mu jamie mu hey or you marry a man and finish and you you realize you are married and nephilim because the man is asleep he will snore for three minutes and kiss an invisible wife for another three minutes so you go mm, 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 mm. then when you finish tch, tch, tch. then you wake him up kojo why now who kissing no? oh and yes and yes and so she on him say or be about to die listen to so normally i would think that people should marry soberly i will get to that at the end of my message where paul said Pete, peter said be sober and be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour whom resisted fast in faith knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world so marrying a spouse that association can bring you an attack there is no way the things that want to fight me in life will not target mommy no they will target her and she too the things that are pursuing her will target me so a marriage is a magnet of attack therefore if you are growing up in life and your attack from the devil is just like this and you went and married a man or a woman whose attack is here you have escalated in attack get ready for battles you never believed you will fight before get ready and and the, in our time these days in which we walk people are just looking at the prestige of positions oh i want to marry a managing director if you know the battles the managing director is fighting you wouldn't like to go near it someone to marry this someone now so association with a spouse can bring you an attack then association with a man of god or a woman of god listen there are some men of god and women of god if you want your peace don't make them your friends don't 
for example I, I will warn anybody who wants to be my very close friend that don't come near don't come near stay far away don't come near i remember one day some of our daughters visited us from accra and they, they were going to travel and then go to um, accra and pastor prince made somebody pick them this was about i think two months ago so i called pastor prince and i said hey man anytime you see any guest come to bogatanga and we make them stay in our house if they are male or female what we are saying is that these people are like our biological children if we don't see you like a biological child you don't sleep in that house so if the person even dropped from the planet mass and landed in our house and slept there i told him i said pastor prince never delegate anybody to take them you yourself must carry them wherever they are going i thought somebody else has very important you see there, there are things you know and that is because just identifying with that house <laughs> means you have chosen to be the devil's enemy when you become our friend you become you become our children the battle lines are drawn so sometimes you can be a member of desert pastures and you are going through strange attacks and people are like ah, what kind of church is this today you are going through an attack here tomorrow you are going through an attack here and you too you are standing there shaking like a confused leaf listen the devil attacks purpose he attacks people with an assignment he attacks people with a mission and some men of god some women of god when you get close to them they become your friend you are part of them oh boy you will go through some attacks you yeah, because they themselves they are never free they themselves are under attack and you yourself you will also be under attack then a parent association with a certain parent can bring you attacks no when you call some people your father or your mother like if they ask you what is your name and you say that my name is um, maybe um philip rollins the name rollins is a warfare name if you want to joke in life don't call yourself philip rollins call yourself philip opia there was a comedian they called opia or philip Oka okala okala was it okala they called them what is it bob okala hmm? so call yourself philip okala because we know okala with comedy but if you mention rollins or they ask you say, oh my name is thomas nkrumah the name nkrumah goes with something there are some people if they are your father or your mother you are born into war you you are born into a battle i, I like those of you who are very quick to write your surname what is your name then you just write oh my name is eugene aikade do you know the meaning of the aikade aikade means enemy of the devil immediately it positions you to fight so if you want change it to philip Ayik, don't don't add the a day <laughs> no sir there are some loins which if you come out of you have been born into war am i talking to somebody at all you look too quiet for my liking you look too and 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 if the people that are sitting in this building are quiet like that then i, I don't know what is happening what is happening then you are just so you see many people and then they, they come they come to you and they are like um daddy i want to be your spiritual son lay hands on me to be your spiritual son no i've just baptized you into war just just baptize you into war my whole life is battle corona period march i came home i i crossed this our church boundary here only once to go to eam well headquarters only one day in nearly a year i have not gone beyond here church my house church the house church the house nowhere else when you choose to say you are my son or my daughter that is the life you've chosen so men of god parents physical parents 
I'm talking about even biological here. That when somebody is your father, oh, you will fight a battle. And there are some people too, when they are your children, children of destiny, oh, Jehovah. For example, you gave birth to Moses. Your name is, um, what is the name? What is Moses' mother's name? Is it Joshebed? Oh, boy, you will fight a battle. The book of Revelation, he said that, and there was a woman that gave birth to a son, and then the dragon was looking for the son or the child to kill. And because of the, the child, the dragon pursued the woman, and they had to run into the wilderness, and they were there for about three and a half years. Now, the reason this devil is chasing the man like that, the woman like that, is because of the child and you know I, I just told you something and this one is just for the people my crew that are here with me to help me minister to those of you online sometimes i go through things and the members think oh this is pastor's battle at the age of 60 i don't have a battle i should worry about now no 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 i don't have a battle i should be worried about what what death i'm 60 something for god's sake i've seen life i built this and by this i'm not talking about the building i'm talking about this wonderful people agape praise this church this bull the number of people who have given their lives to christ Today, Reverend Steve Mensah and I and Mommy were talking, and we're talking about the Holy Ghost action campaign and the things God, that God has done in that revival throughout the years. Look, Brad Yami Adum Yabobi. And uh, giving my life to Christ. I'm, I'm good. I'm blessed. But you know, the devil will not attack me today because of me because he, he has nothing in me he he won't gain anything by attacking me that the devil will not gain anything by attacking me because you see for me and the life god has created me to live on earth the devil is too late what has been done has been done and he can't stop it it, it has been done but you know what there are many of you under the sound of my voice today who are children of destiny with great vision with a great future and god is preparing you for something mighty and you are the children i'm giving birth to so today a lot of my attacks may not be for me as a person that the devil is not attacking me because of me but the devil is attacking me because of aaron because of livingston because of pastor john because of ns because of nusrat because of zinabu because of pastor mike the devil is saying this man has caused a lot of havoc to the kingdom of the devil already we must attack him so that he cannot produce another generation but watch me by the grace of god i will go into pastor mike's generation into pastor aaron's generation and aaron i can tell you by the grace of god i will coach even the generation after you because you will go the first generation and the second generation and the third generation so from where i stand oh i'm looking at to the third and to the fourth generation and i don't know about you but ladies and gentlemen when you are going through attacks and you understand why you are going through the attacks it is easier to understand the attack but when you begin to see the attack and you are oh what did i do wrong hey what happened lord what is going on in my life what is going on in your life is because you are associated with a future that is great a future that is anointed a future that is god's design a future that is god's plan once you start understanding things like this you become impregnable the devil cannot destroy you he cannot defeat you because you know what people when he's attacking you and he will succeed he succeeds when your conscience is weak and your mind is weak when the devil gets you to start asking questions when he gets you to start asking questions you can never win the battle mommy will tell you in our house we don't ask questions we don't we don't I don't do postmortem in the house. I don't do inquiries. <laughs> I don't do inquest. 
I don't do investigations. No. Because I already know the blueprint. I, I know what is written. I know what is there. You see, I understand these dimensions of warfare. That sometimes you are attacked because of your parents, but at times too you are attacked because of the child. And I can look at many of you tonight, online and physically, and I can tell you, you are worth fighting for. You are worth working for. Can I add this? You are worth dying for. Jesus said that the good shepherd loves the sheep and lays down his life for the flock because he knows the value of the sheep. And the Bible says, smite the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. That means the reason for smiting the shepherd is so that the sheep will scatter. So you know what? I gave you the scenario where you are attacked because of your father. You are attacked because of your pastor. I'm giving you the other side of the coin that sometimes we the leaders also, the reason we are attacked is because of you your future, your destiny, what God